Hi there and welcome to the History Teacher. This revision video covers Weimar and Nazi Germany from the GCSE Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. You can now become a member to support me to continue making this content from just £1 a month. Plus you'll get exclusive access to worksheets, revision materials and you'll get to vote on forthcoming episodes. The link is in the description. Hi there guys! Last time we were looking at the groups who supported the Nazis following the Wall Street crash and the subsequent depression. However, the Nazis did not yet have power. In the 1930 election, the Nazis gained only 18% of the vote, giving them 106 seats in the Reichstag. So the Nazis were nowhere near getting a majority. But less than three years later, Hitler would become the Chancellor of Germany. And today we're going to have a look at how that happened. Between 1930 and 1932, life in Germany just got worse and worse. By 1932, 6 million Germans were out of work. There was violence on the streets and the government seemed incapable of doing anything about it. I went through this in more detail in my video on the Wall Street crash, so if you need to revise that, pop back now. You will remember though that the president was elected every seven years and that Paul von Hindenburg became president in 1925. So in 1932 he was up for re-election. By now Hindenburg was 84 years old and was ill and frail but he did not feel he could retire with Germany in such a state. This time Hitler stood against him and the campaign was nasty and sometimes violent. However, when the results of the election were in, Hitler had won 30% of the vote while von Hindenburg had won 49.6%. Unfortunately, this meant that no candidate had won the required 50%, and so another election had to be held. Hitler went on the campaign trail once again. Hiring an aeroplane, he travelled around Germany giving speeches. The SA went on a full offensive, breaking up opposition meetings, fighting in the streets and marching. When the results came in, Hitler had increased his vote to 36%, but von Hindenburg had also increased his to 56%, mostly taking votes from the communist candidate Ernst Thalmann. Von Hindenburg was declared the winner, but Hitler took it as a good sign that his support was increasing. Meanwhile, in the Reichstag, the Chancellor Brüning was trying to manage the challenges brought by the Depression. He'd already angered the left and right by raising taxes and cutting unemployment benefit. Now he tried to deal with the violent behaviour of the SA and the SS by banning them. At the same time, he announced a plan to compulsorily buy land from the rich to house the unemployed. The right-wing parties were outraged at this, and many saw the ban on the SA and SS as a direct threat to their own paramilitary organisations. And of course, Hitler was furious. The rich landowners were enraged at the threat to their lands, and von Hindenburg, the president, was part of this class of people and also hated the policy. The right-wing parties united against Brüning, and without the support of the Reichstag or the president, Brüning was forced to resign on the 30th of May, 1932. You will remember that the chancellor was chosen by the president according to the Weimar Constitution. So von Hindenburg immediately placed the right-wing Catholic von Papen in the role. A high-rank army officer, Kurt von Schleicher, had been advising the president and suggested a right-wing coalition be set up. Von Schleicher believed that Hitler could be persuaded to support them and that they would be able to control Hitler and the Nazi party. The coalition was made up of wealthy businessmen, landowners and army officers with von Papen at their lead. Hitler agreed to support the coalition if the ban on the SA and the SS was lifted. They agreed and Hitler became part of the government. Even between them, the coalition didn't have a majority in the Reichstag, and so this coalition and Chancellor were completely undemocratic and broke the rules of the constitution. Because of this, the Chancellor ruled by decree, using Article 48 to push through all reforms. The people nicknamed the government the Council of Barons to show how undemocratic it was. However, the Council of Barons was not to last long. The next set of Reichstag elections were scheduled for July 1932, so von Papen had just one month to campaign for the next election. This campaign was particularly bloody and violent. There were clashes in the street between the Nazis and the Communists. SA soldiers once again broke up meetings and threatened candidates. Around 100 people were killed in this period and around 7,000 injured. When the results of the election were announced, the Nazis had increased their vote dramatically from 18% to 38%. The Nazis now held 230 seats and had become the largest party in the Reichstag. Hitler immediately went to von Hindenburg and demanded that von Papen be sacked and he be made Chancellor. However, von Hindenburg hated Hitler. Von Hindenburg was a member of the upper class and famously described Hitler as an ill-mannered, jumped-up corporal. Von Hindenburg ignored Hitler's demand and von Papen stayed on as Chancellor. However, without the support of the people or the Reichstag, von Papen called another election in November 1932. He he had hoped that the Nazi vote would fall and Hitler would disappear. He was to be disappointed though. Although the Nazi vote did fall a bit, the Nazis were still the largest party with 196 seats. 
Von Schleicher realised that the Von Papen Chancellorship wasn't working and advised Von Hindenburg to sack him. Eventually, Von Hindenburg agreed. On the 17th of November, Von Papen stepped down. Hindenburg was now stuck. He didn't want to appoint Hitler as a Chancellor, but he didn't know what else to do. However, Von Schleicher told Hindenburg that the election results showed the support for the Nazis was falling, and he was so convinced that he is reported to have said, Herr Hitler is no longer a problem. So, on the 2nd of December 1932, Von Hindenburg made Von Schleicher Chancellor. This was a disastrous decision. Von Schleicher had no public support and no support in the right. Because of this, von Schleicher asked the presidents to suspend the constitution and place the military government in its place, with von Schleicher at its head. However, news of the proposal got out and people were angry. Von Papen went to President von Hindenburg and warned him that a new government should be formed immediately to prevent von Schleicher's military dictatorship. He advised the president to make Hitler Chancellor and himself, von Papen, Vice Chancellor. This way, he said that President von Hindenburg and he could make all the decisions and Hitler would just be a figurehead. Von Papen believed that he could control Hitler and stop him from doing any damage. So, on the 30th of January 1933, Adolf Hitler became the Chancellor of Germany. There's a lot to take in here and a lot of politics, but this is a really important part of the topic too. You need to understand this to make sense of the next steps and how Hitler became a dictator. All three of the main players, the President, von Hindenburg, von Schleicher and von Papen, underestimated Hitler. They all believed he could be controlled and manipulated. Paul von Hindenburg had never really supported the Weimar Republic. He was a member of the upper class and believed that Germany had been better under the Kaiser. He was happy, therefore, to undermine the democracy and as a result, he weakened it. Von Schleicher and von Papen also undermined the Weimar constitution by suggesting the Council of Barons and the rule by the military. They were right-wing conservatives who disliked the influence of left-wing and centre groups in the Reichstag. They wanted to see a stronger government ruled by the wealthy businessmen and landowners. All three had a role in the events leading to Hitler's dictatorship. Okay, that's everything you need to know about the political manoeuvres which led to Hitler becoming Chancellor of Germany. Now for a quick word from my other half and I will see you next time. History teacher's SO here. She's given up work and is living off her savings to make these videos full time. Unfortunately, savings don't last forever, so we're asking for your help. If you can spare any money to help her keep making these videos, please visit the Buy Me A Coffee link in the description and give what you can. That said, we know these are difficult times. You might not have any money to spare, but you can still help. Like, comment and subscribe for the algorithm, but also spread the word. Tell your friends, colleagues and anyone you think might be interested. Interested. Thanks.